prophet is the image that its maker should carve it. The molded image. Hey, welcome back. Karibu ni tena. Let us begin with prayer. Tuanze na Mungu. So we saw in our last presentation, right, that this is the point where to face brass and iron. Right, which was Goliath. So we've seen that the fourth beast of Rome right, began as a republican and ended as a dictatorship. Right, and the ten horns, the state powers. Right, and it says that their teeth, right, were as iron and their nails as brass. And in uh, Psalms 57, verse 4, you read it? Fifty-seven verse four. Uh, I'm seen as I'm seen as Saba. I am So it says here that the uh, teeth, right? They are like spears and arrows, and like a sharp word, a uh, sword. And it marks it together with this tongues of sh uh, the tongue as a sharp sword. It tells us in the Bible that the arrow, right, the bow or the arrow is a message. <laughs> so this iron and clay, right, is this message about death and destruction. So and we say that you have to be in the ark in order to survive that. So in Deuteronomy 28. Verse 48. Right, it, tell, it links all this together and says basically it's an iron yoke that you will receive on your neck. Right, it says, He shall put an iron yoke upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So there's again there's this iron yoke mentioned, right? <laughs> and the the Israelites they had also to choose between the wooden and the iron yoke. Right, Christ says, pick up your cross, right, and follow me. He says, my yoke is easy. So what is the wooden yoke? It's the cross, right? So if you refuse to go to the cross here, we said you cannot enter into the covenant with God. And that's why you receive an iron yoke. It says the Israelites had to accept the wooden yoke it would be an easy or easy life for them. In a sense of that the Lord would have restrained the powers of uh, Babylon. So, but because they did not uh, accept the wooden yoke, 
And he gave them an iron yoke. <laughs> and Christ, Sister White says in the quote from 14, she says, in, By scorning his warning and commandments, they brought upon themselves the full rigor of bondage. So, there was the wooden and the iron yoke. Right? The wooden yoke is what makes you free. The iron yoke brings you into bondage. Which covenant was the bondage? It's the old covenant, right? They chose to remain in the old covenant and that's why they received the iron yoke. You choose basically to remain in bondage forever. <laughs> so, how was this manifested? In the next quote from Patriots and Prophets, uh, Prophets and Kings, she says, among the false teachers of Babylon were two men who claimed to be holy. So what are they? False prophets, right? Christ tells us many will come and say, I am Christ. Christ means the anointed ones, right? They claim to receive the Holy Spirit. But she says here, but whose lives were corrupt. Jeremiah had condemned the evil course of these men and had warned them of their danger. Angered by reproof, they sought to oppose the work of the true prophet by stirring up the people to discredit his words and to act contrary to the counsel of God in the matter of subjection, subjecting themselves to the king of Babylon. So what did Jeremiah tell them? <laughs> Submit yourself to the punishment, right? He told them, go to the cross. Doesn't mean that you're to worship Sunday. But whatever comes upon you, you're to trust that you have to trust that God is in control and that He will deliver you. But if you rebel against it and go against this state power, Sister White says the following. <laughs> it says, The Lord testified through Jeremiah that these false prophets should be delivered into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar and slain before his eyes. Not long after, this prediction was literally fulfilled. So, because they rebelled against the wooden yoke, they received the iron yoke, right? And who killed them? Nebuchadnezzar. Which is who? Egypt the dragon, right? The flood is Goliath. So they rebelled against the state powers, right? We, in a minute, oh, let me see. So what we will see is when the Jews celebrated their fourth feast here. This, this was still under the first uh, surrounding of Jerusalem. They celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. What is Tabernacle Feast for? What does it symbolize? It's freedom, right? It's delivered. So they come here and they celebrate the Feast of Deliverance. Right? And Cessius, he hastes away. But what did the Jews do? They went after them, right? They wanted to kill them in their own strength. But when, when Cessius was actually fleeing, where did they have to go to? When Cessius fled, where did the Jews need to go to? Refuge city, right? Come to that in a moment. You have to go into the ark, right? So, but they, they thought, I will take the, I will take Goliath in my own strength. So, 
It says in verse uh, 49 and 50 in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, right? And speaking about the iron yoke, remember? You want to read this? 49. Yes. Naseba. <laughs> Uh, bwana bwana ataleta taifa juu yako kutoka mbali kutoka nchi ya ncha ya dunia kama aruka arukavyo tai taifa usilo usilolifa uliso uliso usilofa uli, usilo ufahamu ulimi wake so it says here 250 ah uh, msini nasema taifa lenye uso mkali ambalo hal, haliangali uso wa mzee wala hali haipendelei kijana so it says here that an eagle will come, right? And what is the eagle doing always? Eating the carcass, right? So the iron yoke is when the eagle eats you up. And it says a nation of fierce countenance. So in history, who was this nation of fierce countenance? It was Rome, right? Nirumi. Okay, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 23, it speaks, it says, In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and uh, understanding dark sentence shall stand up. Right, so it's this king that comes. And says in verse 24, And his power shall be mighty, but not of his own power, and he shall destroy wonder wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. So what is he doing, this, fierce, the, this king? Destroy, right? So, but who is it in Daniel chapter 8? Hmm? It says, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. The papacy, right? If I have that correct in my mind. So in histor history, was the papacy. So when the nation of fierce countenance comes in Deuteronomy 28, it's the kings, right? But Daniel 8 tells us that it's the Pope who is sitting upon them. So, but when this comes, right, we said we are to flee to Christ, right? So let's go to Leviticus 26, verse 40 to 42. 40 to 42, Leviticus 26. Uh, mambo ya walawi <laughs> 26, 44, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, Wame, wameendelea kuni, kunishikilia kinyume mimi nami nime, nimeendelea kuwashikia kuwa kinyume wao kinyume wao na kuwatia katika nchi ya adui ya adui zao lakini hapo kama mioyo yao uh, isiyo isiyokuwa tohara uh, ikinyenyekea nao wata waka, nao waka waku, wakubali adhabu ya uovu wao Verse 42. So in verse 41, what are they to accept? The punishment, right? So which is what? The wooden yoke, right? So, and when they accept this punishment and confess the sins of uh, their fathers and their own iniquity, what will the Lord do? Verse 42. You remember his covenant, right? That's a promise, right? So, at the midnight cry, what are you tested upon? The promises of God, right? 
usiku wa manane mtu unajaribua kulingana na zile ahadi so when you face come face to face with death we will show whether there is real faith in the promises of god inasema kwa ukija ana kwa ana na kifo itaonesha ukiwa uko na imani na zile ahadi za mungu okay so to whom do you how do you con remember the promises au nakumbuka aje zile ahadi what does that mean how did Daniel remember the promises? Nehemiah is the uh, Ezra. They? Yeah, he was studying. That's how he knew the promises, right? Daniel, Nehemiah, how what you are looking for here again? Only for so many numbers. So, but now you know the promises. So now, what are you to do next? Koko na juu hizi ya hadi ni amasho na kwa kwenye to pray, right? Uombe, to whom? Kwa nani? To Christ, right? Kwa so when you know the promises, you are to go to Christ, you are to flee to Christ. Because who is the promise? Kwa kwa nani ndiye ahadi? Christ. Ni Christ. So where is Christ? Christo At the midnight cry. Physically. In the most holy place. Uh, Christ, right? So, at the midnight cry, when the investigative judgment begins, uh, on the living, you to claim the promises, right? So, on October 22nd, the Millerites went and they entered into in the most holy place, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, no. by faith, right? <inaudible> says it will be seen whether there is real faith in the promises of God. <inaudible> so when this uh, punishment here, or when this chaos is coming here, <inaudible> you need to have faith that Christ is interceding for you, right? <inaudible> That's how you enter by faith into the most holy place. Right, you are not to build a literal ark. That's by faith you enter into the ark. So, but we said that you are, when, when Sensius flees here, where are you to go? To? Pella, the refuge city, right? So, um, and when you flee to the refuge city of Pella, that's when you will be secure, right? Sister White says, not one Christian perished in the destruction of Jerusalem. Christ had given his disciples warnings and all who believed his word watched for the promised sign. After the Romans had surrounded the city, they unexpectedly withdraw their forces. At a time when everything seemed favorable for an immediate attack <laughs> in the providence of God, the promised signal was thus given to the warning waiting Christian. And without a moment, Delay, they fled to this place of safety, the refuge city of Pella. So they flee to uh, the refuge city, right? And, it's, and it says, those who flee, how many die? None, at least of the true Christian, right? So, what is the refuge city a symbol for? Christ, right? Christ is our refuge. <laughs> he says in the next quote, The city of refuge pointed for, uh, appointed for God's ancient people were a symbol of the refuge provided in Christ. So when you come here, right, you are to flee to Christ. Okay, so... Let's go to the next quote. Because when you go to the refuge city, does everybody just get in? What happens when they come? Hmm? Yes, an investigation, right? So, Sister White says, we just begin with the boat print. But while the guilders were not 
uh, to be rashly slain, neither were they guilty to escape punishment. The case of the fugitive was to be fairly tried by the proper authorities and only when found innocent of uh, intentional murder was he to be protected in the city of refuge. The guilty were given up to the avenger and those who were entitled to protection could receive it only on condition of remaining within the appointed refuge. So they come to the refuge city, an investigation takes place. <laughs> and those who were truly innocent were let into the refuge city, right? Those who were not guilty, right, they entered into the refuge city. But those who were guilty, what, where, where, where were they given? To whom were they given? To the avenger. Who's the avenger? Satan, right? It's the destroying angel. Right. So you see that, um, and, and so right here at the midnight cry, when the destroying angel comes, Satan. Right. If you are found without the seal, right? Right? When you don't have the wedding gown, you will be destroyed or given to the avenger, right? And the avenger, whom is he using to destroy you? Goliath, right? It's the iron and the brass. Or just say, say, your adversary. You are given to say or to to the you are to avenge. Uh, and Satan is using Goliath in order to destroy it. So <coughs> let's continue. So we said that um, right here, right, is when the investigative judgment begins. So, the investigative judgment takes place in the most holy place, right? So, <laughs> Sister White comments now here, and he uses uh, the temple of God being opened. She's seeing the temple being opened. Right. And what is in the temple, in the most holy place? What is seen in there? The ark, right? It's the ark that she sees. He says, the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. The ark of God's testament is, the holy, is in the Holy of Holies, the second apartment of the sanctuary. In the ministration of the earthly tabernacle, which served unto example and shadow of heavenly things, this apartment was open only upon the great day of atonement for the cleansing of the sanctuary. So, on the day of atonement, right, you can see in the most holy place. Isaiah, when he came here to the midnight cry, what did he see? The most holy place, right? <laughs> right, and then she says in the next bold print, those who by faith followed their great high priest as he entered upon the ministry in the most holy place beheld the ark of his testament. So in order to enter into the ark, you have to go by faith into the most holy place. So and what is in the ark? What is in the ark? The two tables, which are what? It's the two witnesses, right? The Bible calls the two tables the two witnesses. Yes. 
Hivyo. All right. So the witness has to be in the ark, right? Ama shahidi lazima akuwe kwenye safina. So the two witnesses who prophesied here, they died on the cross, right? Wale mashahidi wawili ambao walikuwa na peana wao ni wapi? They accepted the cross, they would yoke. Walikubali ile mira ya mbao. And by this they entered into the ark. Na kwa hivyo waliingia kwenye hiyo safina. Right? And only there is refuge. That's why their bodies were not touched. Okay. Was Noah a witness? Yes. yes. Sister White says in the next quote in the bold print. Noah stood there in his faithful integrity as a witness to the generation. So Noah, who is a witness, enters into the ark. <coughs> so, and to Noah was given a promise, right? It says that no, uh, that the flood shall no more come upon the world, right? Speaking about the water flood, right? Because we see here that the flood still comes. But what actually does this promise mean? So in the next quote, Sister White talks about it. She says, In heaven, the semblance of a rainbow encircled the throne and uh, overarched the head of Christ. The prophet says, as the appearance of the bow that is in a cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about the throne. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Jehovah. The revelator beheld, behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. There was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight uh, like unto an em emerald. So, <laughs> she's comparing two scriptures about the bow, right? And, and the rainbow is a sign for the covenant, yes? <laughs> yes, it's like the circumcision. And then she says, when men, when man, by his great word, wickedness invites the divine judgment. Right? So it's wickedness who invites the judgment. So when this judgment comes here, which is the flood, what is Christ doing? As the Savior intercedes with the Father in his behalf. Yes. So remember, in order that you can be part of the intercession of Christ, where do you need to go into? Into the holy place. Right? right? Only those who knew when the Lamb went from the holy into the most holy place. They received the blessing on October 22nd, right? <laughs> she says here, Christ points to the bow in the clouds, to the rainbow round about the throne and above his own head, as a token of the mercy of God toward the repenting sinner. So Christ is pointing to the promise, right? And then she explains, with the assurance given to Noah concerning the flood, God himself has likened one of the most precious promises of his grace. I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wrath with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall my covenant of my peace be removed, saith Jehovah that had mercy on thee. So to whom is the promise given? To whom is it given? 
says to the repentant sinner, right? Right? So the promise is there and the promise that the flood won't come over you. Only to the righteous. Right? So the flood will come above upon the wicked. Right? And in order that the flood doesn't overflow you, Christ has to investigate for you. And or in intercede for you. In the next quote, in the bold print, it says, uh, the Lord has said, yes, in the rainbow. It says, in the rainbow above the throne is an everlasting testimony. So which testimony? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is this? It's the promise about the seed, right? right? It's the promise given to Abraham. Right? And those who believe on him shall not perish, he says. When the law is presented before the people, Right? So Moses came down and what did he have in his hand? The law, right? It says when the law is presented before the people, let the teacher of truth point to the throne uh, arch with the rainbow of promise, the righteousness of Christ. So what is the bow? It's the righteousness of Christ. What is the righteousness of Christ? It's your garment, right? So you have to be covered with a garment, the promise, the bow. And she says, this is the promise that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when you have this promise, right? Then it's a token that the Lord loves you so much. Okay, do we have a father that loved his uh, son so much that he gave him a coat? Did the coat have many colors? Yes. yes. It's the covenant, it's the rainbow promise, right? <laughs> but when the Father gives you this uh, coat of many colors, what will your brethren do with you? They're going to hate you, right? Because they hated Christ. They're going to persecute you. Right? So you have to make sure that you have on the garment right because through the garment through the grace you can endure that persecution so then like Christ you will go on the cross for them so they can be saved right remember when you come here you have to manifest charity right greater law that no man that layeth his life down for his friends. <laughs> I want to read the next quote. It says, Our Redeemer, laying aside his glory and majesty, to take human nature and to die man's, sacri uh, to die man's sacrifice, was a miracle of God. It was God's wise arrangement to save man. God required his people to be laborers together with him. He required them to abstain from fleshy lust, which war against the soul, and present their body a live bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to the Lord, which is the only service he will accept from reasonable mortals. Which service will he accept? Only a holy, right? 
Brothers and sisters, there's nothing that the Lord will accept which doesn't reach this requirements. Right? Christ gave the standard that you have to reach. Without the standard, you won't enter into the ark. Right? And without it, you will also never come into heaven. Because remember, the promise is promised only to those. Uh, the, uh, the promise given that the flood will, won't overflow you is only to the righteous. It says here. Jesus had stooped very low in order to reach man in his low estate. God requires of man to take earnest effort and deny self. Where was the greatest evidence or the greatest manifestation of self-denial on this earth? On the cross, right? And he says God requires earnest efforts. We are to go to the cross. There is no salvation without the cross. Right? There is no way that leads to heaven except through Calvary. He says then will he be benefited with the atonement of Christ. When will he be benefited? When he denied self, when he went to the cross. So it says that Christ, when he atones, he's pointing to the promise, right? But the promise was about the cross. So he cannot point to something else except you go to the cross. You see, everything is around the cross. There's nothing. The, the whole salvation plan is the cross. Right? People ask, where is Jesus in this message? Yeah, why do they ask this? Because they worship a Jesus without the cross. Right? So she says here, um, as the Lord bade faithful Noah before the flood come out of all uh, and all that come thou and all thy house into the ark, he will pre previous to the time of trouble say to his faithful saints who have been preparing for translation. Right, come my people, enter thou into the, thy chambers and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself as it is for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So it says that you are to hide yourself in Christ, right? For a little moment. Till which point? Till Goliath is brought down. So what is the ark actually? What is the ark? It was a refuge, right? So she says here, in the, in the bold print, on the bottom, not in the ark, but in Jesus Christ. And she speaks about the refuge. Next quote, just to confirm that, also the bold print. That are out of the ark of safe. Uh, mm, or let's just read the, from the beginning. Now may the blessing of God rest upon the little company, and may we unite with Christ with all the capabilities that we have given up, that He has given us, that He can work with us to make us an, efi an efficiency and power to work upon human mind and to do His will in bringing souls that are out of the ark of safety to Christ. So, it says here that you are to bring other people to Christ, meaning in the ark, right? 
Okay, Christ came on the world, right? He died in order to do what? Save other people, right? So, Sister White says, right, he came, died in order to save the rebel. So, in order to lead people into the ark, where do you have to be? You self have to be in the ark, right? So, if we want to go and save many people in this planet, we have to go on the ark. And you're not going to enter into the ark without going to the cross. So I want to bring another illustration to finish up. So Moses was a type of Christ, right? Okay, when Christ was born, there was a death decree, right? When Moses was born, there was a death decree. Where do we mark the birth of Moses? At the time of the end. Right? So Moses is born. He's born, but what happens with him? It says in Exodus 2, verse 1 and 2. So what does it say? What was what did happen to Moses? He was hidden, right? So what do Goliath or what does Goliath plan right here? To go against the hidden ones, right? So God's people are hidden here. For how many months? Three months, right? One, two, three. The two witnesses were in obscurity, right? Why was he hidden? Because Pharaoh wanted to kill him, right? Okay, the two wit um, Yes, the two witnesses, right? What do they do in this time period here? They are torment, right? According to Revelation 9, the first war, how long do they torment? For five months, right? Okay, Elizabeth, when she received the promise about the birth of John, for how long does she hide herself? Five months, right? And so we see that the hiding is this time period here, right? But after three months, what happens? Can she still hide him? No, she can't hide him anymore, right? So what is he facing now from this point? Death. Right? So it says in Exodus 122. <laughs> So Pharaoh, he wanted to throw the children into the river, right? Which river was it? Was the Nile, right? Go to Jeremiah 46 verse 7. 6, uh, 7 and 8. 46 47 and 8 7 and 8 Na maji yake yanajirusha kama mito. Asema, itajinua 
anita nitaifu nitaifunika nchi nitaiwa nitauharibu mji na hao wakao ndani yake so it speaks here about a flood that comes right unaongelea kusio garika ambayo inakuja and who is it like it unto na imefananishwa na nani Egypt, right? So is this flood here? So what does the word flood mean? It says in the Strong's specifically denial. So Pharaoh, right, wanted to throw the children into the Nile, into the flood. But what was in the Nile? Many crocodiles, right? Right. So it's the dragon that wants to devour. So after three days, uh, three mo uh, months, right? Moses cannot be hidden, hide, uh, be hidden by his parents anymore. So what is his mother doing? She makes an ark for him. Exodus two verse three. Toka mbili tatu inasema na alipokuwa hawezi kumficha tena akampatia kisafina cha 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 manyasi akakipaka safina akakipaka sifa za nalami akamtia mtoto ndani yake akakiweka katika majani kando ya mto so it says here that she puts him in the ark, right? And how does she doubt it? With what? Huh? Doubt it, yes. With pitch, right? Go to Genesis 6, verse 13 and 14. Right? Because the ark of Moses and the ark of Noah is the same ark, right? Let's read. How did Mo Noah make the uh, the ark? Uh, Genesis six, verse thirteen and fourteen. Mwili uh, umekuja mbele mbele zangu kwa sababu wame wameijaza wame dunia dhuluma basi nitawa nitawaharibu pamoja na dunia uh, ujifanyie uji safina ya na mti wa mvinje kufanya uh, <coughs> na viumba ndani ya safina ukaifunike ndani na nje na lami so how did he do it alitengeneza says with pitch right Exactly the same. So we see how, in order to survive this time period, you have to be in the ark. Right? The ark was there. Uh, in order to build the ark, Noah received specific directions. And if you saw Jenga, he is a fina. Noah will be with Dana. It says about the refuge city, you only received uh, protection when you are in the in the city, right? There's an appointed way that the Lord has uh, prepared. Right? And there's no salvation outside of this way. We said that the foolish virgins they can't find any oil in here, right? Right? The oil is the mana, right? So what was in the ark? Except the two tables. The golden pot of mana. And what else? Aaron's rod that budded, right? So, if you are in the ark, then you will find the oil, right? It said about the time of travel here, the food will be provided for you. 
So for sisters, if you want the oil, get on the ark. What is the rod talking about? What is the rod? Aaron's rod that budded. What kind of a rod was it? A dead rod. Right? Was a dead stick. And what did the Lord do with it? He made it alive. Right? What kind of a rod was it? An almond rod, right? In Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah moja. What is promised to Jeremiah? Verse 5 to 11. And I will just read it. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Then said I, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So what did we say? If you're going to go and save the lost sheep, what do they uh, want to do with you? Uh, kill you, right? The rebels want to kill you. But it says, be not afraid of them, for I will deliver thee. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, and to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Right? Whom do you destroy? Whom do you bring down? Goliath, right? Whom do you bring down? Moreover, the Lord, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. So he has this promise, right? He was the dead stick that was made alive. So if we want to be this stick that lives, that brings forth fruit. Right, we have to go on the ark. We have to go on the cross. Right, and that's a daily battle. Right, each step we should think, we should ask the Lord, is this the right thing to do? Right, our whole life has to be re uh, has, has to be changed right, because it's a perfect holy offering that the Lord accepts only so the Lord is asking us right choose you this day whom you will serve do we walk out of this room and just continue do we say I don't care or do we say how was nice and then just continue how mm -hmm. we have done it before I know from experience on this camp meeting everything is fine everybody gets convicted right and then next Monday we have to go to work right and maybe the feeling holds on for a week right and then we go back in our old condition till the next camp meeting comes next year and we get again a nice feeling right but brothers and sisters it's a daily walk that we have to go right so do we go out of this room and just continue how we have done before? Or when do we start to change? 
right now we have to do time is short right? and those who are in this movement for longer they know where we are in time and if you don't know you should make sure that you know because it comes sudden and unexpected and if you're not ready you will never be ready again. Right, it's like a bus that you have missed and they will never come again one more. Should we close with a prayer? Dear me, Father, we thank you for your long suffering. Thank you that your hand is still stretched out to do everything in order to save us. And Lord, it's us who are the problem. I pray that you may remove the problem and help us to make the decision today to serve you till the end of our life. Lord, I pray that each individual here might have been blessed. And as we depart from each other, that you may go with each individual. So that from this day, each, each individual will make a change in their life. That we won't serve two masters anymore. But that we surrender ourselves to you. Lord, I pray that you give us also a good night's rest. And that you may uh, continue to pull your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen.